Reading is taken from James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, which can be found on page 289 in the rear part of your Bible. Controlling the things we say. My brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all make mistakes. If people never said anything wrong, they will be perfect and able to control their entire lives. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can control their whole bodies. Also, a ship is very big and it is pushed by strong winds, but a very small rudder controls that big ship, making it go wherever the pilot wants. It is the same with the tongue. It is, it is a small part of the body, but it brags about great things. A big forest fire can be started with only a little flame, and the tongue is like the fire. It is a whole world of evil among the parts of our bodies. The tongue spreads its evil through the whole body. The tongue is set on fire by heaven and it starts a fire that influences all of life. People can tame every kind of wild animal, bird, reptile and fish, and they have tamed them, but no one can tame the tongue. It is wild and evil and full of deadly poison. We use our tongues to praise our Lord and Father, but then we curse people whom God made like himself. Praises and curses come from the same man. My brothers and sisters, this should not happen. Do good and bad water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree make olives? Or can a grapevine make figs? No. And a well full of salty water cannot give good water. So saith the Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 116, verses 1 to 8. It can be found on pages 110 in the Old Testament. Someone saved from death praises God. I love the Lord because He hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens to me every time I call to Him. The danger of death was all around me. The horrors of the grave closed in on me. I was filled with fear and anxiety. Then I called to the Lord, Save me. The Lord is merciful and good. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects the helpless. When I was in danger, He saved me. Be confident, my heart, because the Lord has been good to me. The Lord saved me from death. He stopped, he stopped my tears and kept me from the feet. This is the word of the Lord. Yes, is now to come and speak to us, so let's pray for her. Lord, we, we ask that you will be with us. She shares her sermon with us. Please be with her in her delivery, and may we hear the message that she wants to share with us. Our readings this morning offer two different ways of thinking about what we say and how we say it. Psalm 116, our second reading, is very much in favour of words, or to be more specific, it is very keen on the benefits of talking to God. God has heard the psalmist's voice and supplications and prayers and has listened to them. When the psalmist called on God, God delivered them from their distress. I'm struck that the psalmist didn't say, God stopped difficult things happening to me completely. Rather, when the psalmist called for help, God provided that help. Some of us will remember the very long-running British Telecom advertising campaign which said, it's good to talk. 
As far as the psalmist is concerned, it is indeed good to talk to God. Our reading from James, however, strikes a more reflective, a more cautious note. While tongues can be used to bless, they can be used to curse as well. I suspect most, if not all of us, have been at the sharp end of somebody's tongue, and that we've also been the person who has said something hurtful without realising just how much pain you are about to cause. As James says, the tongue may be a pretty small body part, but it can have a disproportionately large influence. Just like a bit in a horse's bridle guides a horse, or a rudder guides a ship. James knows how easy it is to say something without thinking it through properly first. After all, as he writes, many of us make mistakes. All of us make many mistakes. The letter of James, which is quite a short one, altogether offers a patchwork of pastoral advice to the people he's writing to. He addresses the letter to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. So rather than writing to a particular church in a city, like the letters of Paul do to the church in Corinth or the church in Rome, James is writing to a widespread community of believers, wherever they may be. Given that, it's no surprise he wants to think about how communities talk to one another, how they communicate, and also how what we say reveals some core truths about us. We cannot, as James reminds us, bless God and curse those made in God's image with the same mouth. There's an echo here back to Matthew's Gospel as well, where Jesus tells the crowd who are gathered to hear him that people are known by the fruit that they bear, and that a good tree can't bear bad fruit, or a bad tree good fruit. James picks up that metaphor and runs with it, asking if a fig tree can bear olives, or if you can pick figs from a grapevine. The obvious answer, as anybody who knows anything about plants, knows is, of course you can't. The kind of tree determines the fruit. But there's hope here. James says that we can't both bless and curse at the same time. We can't be fresh and salt water mixed together. But there is a hint here, just a hint, that we can choose to work on this problem. We can choose to bring forth more fresh water than we do salt water. We can try our very best to avoid mistakes in our words to each other, even that may be a long and a hard job that is never really done. We can do our best to be trees and vines that bear good fruit. Because the underlying point is that the words themselves don't come out of nowhere. They're the outward sign of the kind of people that we are. Earlier in the letter, James argues that it is impossible to separate faith from works, that the acts that we perform are deeply connected to our faith in God. Our words as well come from the people that we are. To bring forth fruit, to be wells of fresh water, demands that we hand ourselves over to the slow and transformative work of the Holy Spirit. Words have power. James warns us of what happens if we speak carelessly. Psalm 116 offers a glimpse of the power of speaking with deep purpose. We can speak words with care. Good fruit can come of them. Indeed, that is precisely what we are celebrating today, on the 40th anniversary of when Liz and Hugh spoke their marriage vows to each other promising to be with each other for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish each other for the rest of their lives together. And we celebrate the fruit of those words now, because the fruit is good. The strength and energy of those promises, spoken 40 years ago, have carried them through four decades of married life. 
those few minutes to say those words. And it's such a short time if you think about, you know, the grand stretch of eternity. Just a few minutes have been the rudder that has guided their lives from that moment. The tongue is only small, but it has power. And that means power to do good as well as evil. When we remember that our mouths are for blessing, and that we can bless both God and those made in the image of God, we can transform how we, as individuals and as a community, are present in this world. There are so many places of pain and suffering where speaking a blessing, being a blessing, can make the difference. So many people, like the psalmist, crying out to God in their suffering, for whom words of kindness and of hope make all the difference. There is a famous prayer uh, attributed to St. Teresa of Avila, which some of you may know, uh, and this speaks to the message that James has for his readers, and this is how it goes. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hand. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Christ has no body now on earth but ours. And he has no tongue on earth but ours. When we speak as Christians, people think they hear us speaking in God's name. And if we curse, they hear God curse. A world that sometimes feels so broken that we can't see a way forward does not need to hear rejection. It needs to hear the good news of God's all-embracing love. Jesus' sacrifice and the forgiveness of our sins that saves and redeems us. And so I invite us all in the week ahead to respond to James's invitation to bless God and our neighbour and to continue the work of transformation so that we can be springs of fresh water to the dry soil of our world that is thirsty for God. Amen.